the lessons I learned were were very profound as a child because I remember playing in the forest and he would tell me, I'm out, I'm out. And me and my cousin would look at each other, what, 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 what are you so mad about? What are you so mad about? And finally one day he says, because you, you, you make it too much noise for the forest. Well, you know, we're kids. We don't know this stuff. He says, you got to listen. You got to listen to the mm-hmm. forest. The, the, the wind going to play the song and the birds going to sing and, and the trees going to dance for you. And he's just destroying the energy. And, you know, as I said, yeah, okay, Grandpa, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't until I was probably 35 that I went through my cultural renaissance. And then I says, oh, now I know what he meant by all of this. Now mm-hmm. I know. And like I said, he was never rich, but he was indeed blessed. Well, I think, you know, you alluded to something that um, I think that we all can appreciate and, and, and uh, of our kupuna and that, that idea and mana'o of silence, whether it's in the forest or just... I- Makahana ka ike, you know, ho'olohe me ka pepeyao, pa'akawaha, mm-hmm. nana kamaka, mm-hmm. and it, that, you know, what you share is is so much of a, um, a Hawaiian practice that sometimes, you know, we, we don't even recognize right. it. And so that, that, maybe not silence, but, you know, what the thing your kupuna, things, many things that your kupuna taught you about just observing, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. hilo, look at what what we were doing in the forest versus like trying to talk about it. And the right. same was on the ocean when they look right. look, look the, the the type of clouds that were coming in, right. the direction of the wind, the tides, the moon, our our so called farmers farmers almanac. I mean we were our our people were unbelievably observant, mm-hmm. 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 unbelievably poetic in their writing with the kanga and everything else. So, you know, I use the uh the the uh tenacity of the Oopu. Mm-hmm. You know, my grandma they used to tell me they used to catch oh, open about a pound yeah, before. Right. I, I never knew that they had to go downstream to come back upstream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they used their gills and stuff to make their way up up into the streams. So I said to myself, wow, okay, Kanaka, if you can be like that, if we can find any trickle of water, any chance that we have the opportunity mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. move ourselves up, I think of the Oopu as fighting as his way up, mm-hmm. all the way up there. The visual that comes to mind is both Kahoma Stream uh, and yeah. Wailuku River. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because here you have uh, a stream and a river that almost 50% of uh, of it has been channelized and, mm-hmm. and cemented over. Mm-hmm. And so that water heats up. The springs yeah. that allow it to... Fo- the water just gushes right through, you know, because it doesn't allow to meander around Pohaku that were there for in its natural stream bed. Mm-hmm. And yet... The O'opu, the Hihivai, our Opai are still able to thrive, thrive uh-huh. in those spaces. And so you're right. I mean, that's a great metaphor of, of you know, how we as Kanaka need to, to, to think and feel and, and to act upon it. And, you know, to not just care for this, but to remember that, you know, just even with the challenges that we face, we can still... Um, we don't just have to survive here in Hawaii. We can we can continue to thrive again. Correct. 